Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of The Shawning, in which we're going to cover Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, which is one of my favorite installments in the Halloween franchise, but is also one of the most underappreciated. That's how we'll put that. Most people don't like Halloween 4. They kind of gave up after Halloween 3, and I kind of can understand why. You had Halloween 1, which was a classic. Then you had Halloween 2, in my opinion, also a classic. Then you had Halloween 3, which is a cult classic, but it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. So a lot of people weren't a fan, obviously, because they wanted to see Michael Myers. But they continued the story with Halloween 4, but they tweaked it just a little bit. So, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Halloween 4 is about, the return of Michael Myers, obviously because it's in the title, but why is he returning? Well, <clears throat> it says in the movie that 10 years, I believe it was 10 years after everything occurred in the original movie, Laurie Strode had a daughter, aka Jamie Lloyd, Jamie Lloyd, they changed the name, they don't really give much backstory on, you know, what happened, who her dad was, anything like that. They mainly just say, okay, Laurie Schrode is dead. Jamie Lloyd is the daughter. That's that. We have no other backstory. It just kind of starts from there. So what it is is Michael Myers escapes. Obviously goes after Jamie because Jamie is the daughter of Laurie, who is Michael Myers' sister. <sighs> It's a lot, but you get it. Anyway, Dr. Loomis gets involved. Yes, he comes back too. Now he's burned and crazy. So that's a whole mess. And Michael Myers is back, but he looks a little bit different. The mask in this one is very, very plain. Not in a good way. Not like the original. But there was a lot of mess ups with this mask. There's actually three. Two different variations of this mask in this movie. You have the white and brown hair. The face does not look the same. It was painted over and the hair was redone because the original masks that they got were pink and had blonde hair. Well, in two scenes, the gas station scene toward the beginning and the scene in the school towards the end where Michael Myers throws Dr. Loomis out of the school window. It's not a spoiler. If you haven't seen the movie this far, you've missed it but you can still watch it. But in both of those scenes, the mask is the pink and white one, and they were too tired and did not notice. I'm going to call bull on that one because I would definitely notice if there was a pink Michael Myers with white hair. But it's okay. I didn't get paid to do it. But other than that, I can look past it. But there are two different variations, and you can see in the scenes, it's not like something you have to look for. It's clear as day. So if you're paying attention, you'll know. So Michael Myers goes after Jamie. Dr. Loomis gets involved. Same very much, same pattern as a slasher movie goes. I'm not going to tell you too much because I don't want to, you know, tell you the entire movie, just in case you haven't watched it, because I don't know. So, I am going to go a little deep into the characters, just because I'm not going to go over a lot, but I really enjoy this movie, so we'll go into it. Dr. Loomis, I love Dr. Loomis. Donald Pleasance is amazing, rest in peace. But I love him in Halloween. All of them, I think he's great. But, he goes a little bonkers after the second one. So, in the fourth one, he's not in the third one either. So, in the fourth one... He's definitely a crazy old man all the way. He's kind of aggressive for no reason at all. I understand that, you know, Michael Myers is evil, but you don't have to tell us all the time. We know. Then you have Jamie Lloyd, which is Danielle Harris. She's also played in the Rob Zombie Halloween movies as well. So if you've seen these movies or you've seen those movies, you'll recognize her. She's very, very big in the uh, horror community, if you will. And I think she's amazing as well. And I think she does great in this movie and in the fifth one as well. Oops, another spoiler. Well, yeah, the fifth one's the same story. Well, not the same story, but a continuation. But she does great. Child actors don't get a lot of credit. And I think she does wonderful. She's definitely, definitely, definitely the right choice for these two movies. And I just, I love her. I think she's great. I don't, I do not think 
there is any other way to introduce a child in a slasher movie environment better than the way they did in Halloween 4 and 5. But that's just my personal opinion. Then you have Rachel, who is her guardian slash stepsister. Um, she's good support. You know, I'm really glad they decided to do that. I'm glad it wasn't just Jamie versus Michael Myers kind of a deal. Because, you know, that's not a lot of credibility towards the franchise as a whole. So I'm really glad they had that strong support there. And she added a lot to the movie as well. And then obviously the man of the hour, Michael Myers. When horror, <clears throat> when slashers, like when you have multiple slashers in a franchise, not multiple individual killers, I'm saying insert like movies in the franchise, normally they get more brutal as they go. So this movie has a lot more brutality than the first movie or even the second one so that's just kind of a given anytime you're watching you know friday the 13th nightmare on elm street halloween child's play slash chucky they all follow that same pattern the more movies the more kills it's a simple fact but overall i mean i really really like this movie because it's not too much it's not so brutal that i'm like well this just doesn't make sense so i really like that um, I also really enjoy the setting and just the feel that they have in this movie. Um, Haddonfield, you really get that small town vibe more so in this movie than you do in the first one or two. The second one mainly is in a hospital, so you're not really getting a lot of atmosphere in the town itself anyway. But the first one, you still don't really get a lot. It's mainly one street. I mean, you see them drive for a little bit through the town, but it's not a lot. So... This movie, you have a lot more interactions with the different stores and settings and the atmosphere altogether. It definitely feels like a nice fall, small town. It's, it's just really nice. I really enjoyed it. And that's mainly why I really enjoyed the fourth and the fifth installment of uh, the Halloween franchise. So if you haven't seen this movie, I really do recommend it. I know a lot of people don't like watching sequels, and I understand that. But I definitely would give it a shot. If you have seen it and you want to watch it again, then you should just watch this discussion and maybe it'll rejuvenate your love for the Halloween franchise. I don't know. But just remember, you keep watching scary movies and I'll just keep talking about them. And remember, like, subscribe, and share.